Sharon Neumbo was arrested following a case of theft or alternatively fraud which was made against her. She sits on the boards of a number of fishing companies and was very well acquainted with those who are in jail today as part of the Fishrod 6. She believes that her arrest was in fact an attempt to silence her from speaking out against the corruption she suspected was taking place within the company she worked for and shares her story on this It's a Wrap exclusive. Eventually when I got out um, I was informed that I, well, when I got to the charge office now eventually to be released, that I was informed that I was released on bail um, uh, for $5,000. Um, now, there's instances, of course, where police can give police bail, you know, uh, and then there are instances where police cannot give police bail. You have to appear, and one of those is fraud. So I found it a bit strange that my case was a fraud case, fraud or in the alternative theft, um, but you know, the bail was granted anyway without me having been um, into a courtroom or anything. So I came back, of course, the Monday for um, a bail hearing um, that was later postponed and, and the charges were read to me. Um, and uh, I still don't understand. I'm waiting for my legal team to explain it to me because it says that I, I lied and, ex and, and unlawfully um, uh, took funds from Jacqueline Antiart and not from the company. Um, and uh, yeah, all sorts of things. And in that time also, the reasons that they were giving for not wanting to give me bail was that apparently that I had committed other crimes and one of th I had forged a signature, which coincidentally is a signature it, it's that, that is now being investigated by, by BIPA, where BIPA has asked these Icelandics who've made an accusation against me to say I forged a signature and that I colluded with BIPA staff to explain because they gave one side of the story without giving minutes and proper resolutions to BIPA to change directorship in the company that allowed them to sell the vessel without permission. So when I tried to rectify this after a shareholders meeting where the directors were rightfully appointed and, I, I, and they went in the day later, uh, the, the meeting was on a Friday and a Monday they went and registered a new directors without any of the Namibians, despite Namibians directors being added at the initial meeting. So I tried to rectify this issue um, and they wrote a letter to BIPA to say that I forged the signature probably or I don't actually know, I've never seen the content of that. What I saw was the content of a letter when we attempted to call a board meeting for the vessel owning company to get explanations as to what was happening. is a letter that the, the company secretary forwarded a letter, PWC, um, that forwarded a letter to say, no, BIPA is investigating how I submitted a CM29 that was signed and and that they don't recognize my CM29 actually and that they only recognize the one submitted by the Icelandics. I, we had no reason, nothing. We started writing letters to BIPA um, towards the end of last year, numerous letters um, to which we didn't get responses until, you know, at the beginning of the year we said we might not have a, a choice but to go to court and compel them to explain to us why, if we've got minutes, um, you know, in, uh, we don't even have minutes because the Icelandics would never dare share minutes. Uh, but luckily, I actually recorded the meeting. So I had the meeting and I had it transcribed. I, I, I proofread, I had it proofread, I listened to it word for word. It's exactly what happened in that meeting with the appointment of the directors. So I couldn't understand the basis of the, that I, the signature was forged. Um, BIPA is still investigating, I believe. They've been given an opportunity to respond by the 31st of, July, uh, 31st of January. Um, hopefully we would get more light, light on what happened or maybe more, I don't know, charges against me. I, 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 <laughs> I don't know. Uh, because at this point, it seems like they're just coming from everywhere. You know, it's, it's oh, there's so many stories. And, oh, yes, I've, stole, I've stolen this much money and that much money. And I'm doing this because I want to get bribes and, and all of these things. But everybody forgets that I'm actually fighting to get back the money that was stolen from two companies that we co-owned with the Icelandics. One is Arctic Nam, which was the operational company that suddenly um, made losses. If you, if you look at it, I mean, if you go from, from a profit of 100 million to a, a loss of 1 million, there's 2 million. So in two years, 400 million. Where is that money? One, what happened there? Explain it to me. Um, two, this vessel that we co-owned, that we bought for 28 million, at the beginning, together, they refused to flag it in Namibia and to register it in Namibia until 2016 when the noise started after uh, Johannes left and we started asking questions. And then they, very quickly, within a matter of months, they, they, they flagged the vessel.
you know, it was all of a sudden it was Namibia. And I thank God for that day because if it hadn't been, that vessel would have been out of that water by now, which is what they did when they, when they changed signatories. They sold the vessel um, based it on the shareholders' resolutions that they passed and their majority shareholding in the, in the vessel owning company, so they had 58, so they passed that resolution. Um, we, we went to court that evening to get a stay uh, from that resolution because although there were four parties involved, there was our, my company and their company, there was a, sh a shareholder agreement signed. And in terms of the shareholders agreement, it said that irrespective of whoever else has signed this agreement, it is binding if on the one side the Icelandic summary had signed and on the other side any of the Namibian host right. So we had signed it with them. And there's a clause in the agreement that says, irrespective of who have signed, it is binding between the two parties. And in there is a minority protection which says that the vessel cannot be sold without permission of 75% of the shareholders. So we, uh, we went to court that evening at nine o'clock and we got a, 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 to try and get an order to stay. And um, that was in August, on the 2nd of August, actually. And so that was before my arrest, right? So you could see I was becoming a problem, you know, for everybody. And, and um, eventually, you know, they went and registered these, these and there were specific resolutions huh, um, as to who's going who's gonna to be responsible for the transactions, how much the vessel is going to be sold for, and to whom, and, that f and so forth. And, and as to whom, we also only found out at the shareholders' meeting. This information, they just refused to disclose. Imagine inviting me to a shareholders' meeting to say I'm coming to discuss something without giving me full information. Even just the notice, if you look at it in its own, was defective. But anyway, nevertheless, that we'll, we'll get to that um, later. But so they registered this, and then they went and they, 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 they concluded a transaction to sell the vessel. We bought this vessel for 28 million, and all of a sudden, two years later, it had depreciated down to 19 million. US, do U.S. dollars, right? And Namibians own, the Namibian partners own 42% of this. Um, so we, we, we technically lost uh, 9 million <laughs> in two years, U.S. dollars. And might I just add, I mean, gener that vessel is well maintained. It, 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 it's, it's been to dry dock. It's, 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 you know, it's been referred to as, as, the, as, the, as, the, as the Porsche or the Ferrari of, of all the, the, the vessels. But suddenly it goes from 28 million to 19 million.